This is a clinical psychologist. I asked him about his job, including the best and the worst bits. If you're new here, my name's Francis. For the past year, I've been working on a master's placement in a child and adolescent mental health service in the NHS, and I'm about to start the clinical psychology doctorate at Oxford. After pestering most of the staff members at work, I interviewed my supervisor, Emmanuel. Emmanuel has been a clinical psychologist for over a decade and therefore knows a hell of a lot more about this field than I do. I learned a lot from him during this interview, even though I did it after finishing most of my masters and getting onto the doctorate. So I'm confident this will help at least one of you if you have any interest whatsoever in this field. So without further ado, I give you Emmanuel. Would you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Who are you? So my name is Emmanuel Steels and I am a clinical psychologist. What is a clinical psychologist? How would you summarise the job role? A clinical psychologist is first and foremost a uh, therapist, so someone who provides therapeutic input to a client. But a clinical psychologist differs from other therapists in that we use evidence-based models to help our clients overcome mental health difficulties. What was it about clinical psychology that appeal to you? I think it is the overlap between obviously the, the therapeutic bit, which is about being able to contain someone, contain their anxiety, their worries, the emotions that are brought up in a session, be genuine, non-judgmental, to convey a, a sense of, of genuine care towards your client. Alongside that is obviously the fact that you use evidence-based and objectively measurable interventions. That feels like the, the right place to be in personally as a, as a practitioner, but also for the clients, um, because obviously, given that it's measurable, you can see whether an intervention is yielding success or not. And if not, then you look into a different modality. You can reassess uh, whether contextual factors are at play or are you indeed addressing the right issue? Uh, is the diagnosis the right one? A common question that I had before deciding I wanted to get into this was, as you touched on, how does clinical psychology differ from other therapies? You could be a psychotherapist, you could be like a CBT therapist, which is separate, but also clinical psychology has CBT within mm -hmm. it and all the other types of therapies. So I guess, how would you summarize how it's different? I think it is the ability to be integrative in your approach in that mm. you do not have to rigidly stick to a model yeah and um, cbt will be the preferred model mm -hmm. um, for, for most therapists as a clinical psychologist you'll be well schooled in in cbt but i think the richness of being a clinical psychologist is that you can also integrate mbt or dbt any modality you have either trained in as part of your um, you know training to become a clinical psychologist or yeah. as part of your continual professional development sometimes the evidence suggests that a certain modality is the right way forward for that specific mental health difficulty yeah and in these cases if the young person or if the client responds well to that treatment you'd be advised to to stick to obviously the modality itself when you say evidence-based i feel like someone would argue that you know if they're in a psychodynamic modality then mm. they would say well there's evidence for this like therapy there's evidence for every therapy almost i guess like what makes it like more evidence-based to be a clinical psychologist i think it is in the in the measure of of, of the outcome the fact that we would use uh, questionnaire psychometric assessment tools right yeah to, to measure the progress you know objectively there is obviously the subjective part there is your own kind of clinical judgment mm -hmm. but there is also the psychometric assessment tools there is that kind of measurable uh, progress to you know fall back on how would you describe like what your job is most of my experience as i said is has been with children and adolescents as part of um, what is called a single point of access we triage referrals conduct assessments uh, we meet with the young persons we meet with the families mm. and then develop a care plan which addresses the difficulties and, and so my job consists of listening to the wishes of, of the young person and the family but also thinking clinically in terms of which modality would be the best uh, suited to address the difficulties that the young person presents with. And how, how do you think through that and like make sense of all the information a young person provides and I guess it's so different between... It is, it is, and I guess that, that's what makes the job really interesting. Every young person that you meet brings a different story. Every mm. individual is unique. I will often be, you know, the first contact uh, that a young person may have with therapeutic services so um so it's, it's important to be able to establish rapport to you know make the, the young person feel heard in a genuine way in a non-judgmental way and then obviously agree with them you know what next steps uh, are in order so what's a typical day like for you in CAMS? at nine o'clock we would start the day with going through the referrals that we have received the day before we have 
prioritised young persons who are more at risk. So we would then try and get a hold of the young person or the family and help the family to mitigate the risk, formulating with them a safety plan. We would then establish contact with the other young persons that have been referred to us speak to them if possible or speak to their families, get a sense of, of what the context is, what the risk is and what the presentation may be that uh, the young person struggles with. If possible, we would signpost uh, the young person to the appropriate service there and then. But if there is a need for an assessment to be offered, then we would offer the first um, availability. Once triage and the necessary calls have been made, we would usually go into uh, assessments. So we would have an assessment in the morning and an assessment in the afternoon they are 90 minutes but they you know can exceed that time or sometimes it can be briefer we would meet with the family we would meet it with the young person we would go through um you know the the, the context the history family history we would uh, conduct a mental state examination we would look at risk we would address you know the the areas of their lives which need to be addressed and then together with them agree on what the next uh, step ought to be we listen to their wishes but we also have to think clinically in terms of what the best next step um, should be between assessments we would usually reach out to other services that we work with for the majority that would be making calls to uh, social workers but we also uh, liaise with uh, schools sometimes set up meetings multidisciplinary meetings social services school sometimes police can be present yeah in order to you know make sure that the young person is safe and 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 well supported there is space perhaps for no, another assessment in the afternoon a lot of of the work consists of administrative tasks unfortunately there's lots of kind of typing up of notes um writing referral letters uh, written communication with uh, partners that we have, so other services that we work with. Well, that could be colleagues, you know, from from different uh, services within CAMS. What is the best part of your role? The privilege I have establishing a relationship with the young persons who come and, and seek help. Often I will be the first interaction these young persons have with mental health services. I feel you know extremely privileged to be able to listen to the stories they bring, create a formulation together with them, an understanding as to what has happened in your life that has led to these difficulties. You know, most of the young persons who come to see me tend to think there's something wrong with them. I'm worthless, I'm not good enough, I'm weak. An assessment helps to externalize that and, and helps the young person understand the rationale. What has happened that has shifted the way I think about myself, mm. about my relationships with uh, loved ones and, and my place in the world. That can be something really cathartic. Uh, for, for these young persons. When the young person leaves the assessment feeling that they, they kind of get that they're not to blame, that there's nothing wrong with them, but that events have happened in their lives which have impacted uh, their self-esteem, the way they, they think about themselves. You know, having a good first experience is also inviting for them to take up the support thereafter, believe in the process and, and the possible outcomes. What about the worst part of the job or least, yeah. <laughs> least best? I don't know if there's a worst part, but inevitably it's difficult because sometimes despite our best efforts, we are not able to sufficiently help a young person. Because there is a context uh, that is out of our reach. It can be frustrating having to tell a, a young person or a family they'll sit on a waiting list for a long time before the, yeah. the actual therapy can can, um, can happen or that somehow they do not meet the threshold. That's something that I find um, quite difficult in a job I do is, is feeling that perhaps sometimes due to a lack of resources, um, the, the wait is too long or that the help which is available is a long way away. How does being a clinical psychologist in the private sector compare to yeah. NHS? It doesn't necessarily differ that much mm. because you can decide to either be part of a clinic or you could be a therapist that uh, practices uh, individually. I would say if you decide to, to have your own private practice, then things do differ quite starkly from right. being part of the NHS, because within the NHS, you will always be part of a team. In that sense, it's just more pleasant, you know, it's more containing. There are different perspectives. If you, you know, uh, most teams will have multiple professional backgrounds, which always enriches, you know, your understanding of a case or the, the ability to move forward. It's just a richness in, in being part of a team. But when you then practice by yourself uh, individually, I think the things that 
you need to be mindful of is to make sure that you're not isolated. You have, you know, decent clinical supervision mm -hmm. or that you're somehow uh, part of a network. You can refer clients to colleagues and to uh, different settings as uh, clinically appropriate or required. Having spoken to many colleagues who have private practices, that is the one thing that keeps on coming up is, is this sense of being quite isolated. I didn't realize that in private practice, I guess you don't have like the team, like a multidisciplinary team. So you just have yourself and then a, super, a supervisor, I guess you find privately. There's many different settings. You have that setting whereby you are a, a clinician by yourself in private practice. You can join a practice with other um, colleagues and they do not need to be, you know, clinical psychologists, all of them. Yeah. They could be a psychiatrist part of that clinic. They could be a clinical nurse specialist as part of that team. They could be therapists schooled in different modalities. And that's that's the richness. If you find yourself in that setting, I, I, would, I would think that's the gold standard because you mm. you have maybe more flexibility in working privately but you're not by yourself there are hospitals you know privately run mm. hospitals that you can join within that hospital it, you know the pathways will mimic pathways of the NHS often and you will find that most professionals tend to work both within the NHS and then see uh, clients privately as as is you know the case for me you've been working in this service for is it five years mm -hmm. at this point yeah. where do you see your career going in the future I think one of my wishes would be to find a way to scale the support. So I tremendously enjoy helping my clients overcome the challenges that hold them back from living a, a more fulfilling life. Yeah. But it is a slow process. It is on a one-to-one. -one, and I believe technology offers a, an answer in terms of bridging the gap between the demands that cannot be met currently and obviously the, the you know the, the help that is available i believe that in the future there will be uh, much more technological uh, advances or digital interventions that will merge with uh, you know clinical psychology or therapeutic interventions mm -hmm. this is a direction i would like to uh, grow into. What would you say to someone who is thinking of becoming a clinical psychologist and getting into the field? Anything they should bear in mind? It is a, a very worthwhile and satisfying job. There is professionally no greater feeling than being able to help someone overcome mm -hmm. their challenges. You will be in a very privileged position being part of uh, your, your clients' lives in a very intimate way. But I think that as advice that I would like to give is making sure that there are around you other colleagues, supervisors, part of your network, so that you minimize the sense of isolation and also prepare yourself that whilst it is a beautiful profession, it's also a very demanding one. You will not be able to help everyone that despite your best efforts, there will be clients that do not benefit from the intervention, who may worsen whilst uh, you are trying to support them, to understand and accept that this is part of, of the job and it doesn't reflect on your ability as a professional. Thanks again to Emmanuel for taking the time to be interviewed by my amateur journalism slash podcasting skills. If you're new to my channel, I make videos about uni, psychology, clinical psychology. So subscribe if those things are up your street and I will see you very soon with another video. question again or yeah, yeah just press stop pause record <laughs> you want to do that okay okay